Hello, good morning, everyone. <laughs> morning. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing fine and doing great. So this is my first time on here live this whole week. And we have something quite serious to discuss today. Today, we're going to be talking about fraud and misrepresentation, willful misrepresentation in U.S. immigration law. Um, hmm. That's interesting. I thought I created, a, you know, a banner for this. Okay, let me just do that. I hope you guys are great. Um, fraud and willful. Willful misrep. Okay, I will be sharing my screen with you guys. Um, so please bear with me. In U.S. Migration. Okay, perfect. I got that down. Add banner. Okay, so that's the topic for today. We're going to be discussing fraud and willful misrepresentation. Welcome to the live video. When you come on, don't forget to comment, drop an emoji, you know, like and share if you can. And if you watch this live video later, of course, please feel free to, um, you know, follow the page, subscribe and comment and like and share so that I know you guys watched. Okay. So guys, um, there are certain grounds of inadmissibility, okay, to be, to, so let's start from this point. Um, to gain entry to come into the United States, you need to be admissible. To even file an adjustment of status application, you need to be admissible. What does admissibility mean? It just means that, you know, you're, you, you know, you should be able to come into the U.S. with no pending issues. Okay, if you have pending issues, then it means you are inadmissible. And in, inadmissibility may be based on various grounds. We have health grounds of inadmissibility. We have, you know, criminal grounds of inadmissibility. We have um, willful misrepresentation. We have fraud. We have, you know, false claim to U.S. citizenship. We have, you know, we have a, a number of grounds of, um, of inadmissibility. Okay, so... Guys, you're welcome to this live video. I see some of you are trooping in. Please drop me your comments. I'll be reading them. I would love to see who's watching and then interact some more with you guys. So these are some of the grounds of inadmissibility. And today we're going to be particularly looking at the ground of fraud and mis willful misrepresentation because I see it happen a lot of the times to many immigrants, especially those here in the United States. And it's a really onerous ground of of, of inadmissibility. The thing is that with grounds of inadmissibility, some of them could be temporary, um, you know, they have, they are determinate, but some of them are permanent and forever. So for example, if you have um, an inadmissibility based on unlawful presence and you've been barred from the US for three years, for example, after three years, you know, that ground of inadmissibility ends. But for an, a ground of inadmissibility like willful misrepresentation or even fraud, it's a permanent ground of inadmissibility. There's no time period. And so that's a much more heavy burden to bear. OK, so we're going to be looking at these grounds, these very, very um, serious grounds, because lots of immigrants sometimes find that, you know, they, they don't even understand that sometimes what they're doing is um, willful misrepresentation or even constitutes fraud. And when you are discovered, it can be a very, very heavy price to pay. Okay. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, okay, perfect. Um, let me open this up much bigger. Okay. So let's talk first of all about, well, well, let's we we could probably do the differentiation between um, willful misrepresentation and fraud. So fraud and willful misrepresentation, yes, they are definitely distinct, you know, actions uh, for inadmissibility. But they are they share main, you know, a lot of the main common ingredients. But there are two grounds of um, 
you know, two, two grounds which you find in fraud that you don't find in willful misrepresentation. So I would say that fraud is a step higher than willful misrepresentation. Of course, I mean, it even sounds like it. Willful mis misrepresentation is, you know, kind of a little bit lower, All, although both of them are charged under um, Section 212A6CI of the Immigration and Nationality Act. Okay, so both of them have the same effect again, but um, fraud has two extra or additional element that make um that make a fraud whereas willful misrepresentation does not have those elements okay so a person who is inadmissible for fraud is always inadmissible for willful misrepresentation because all the elements of fraud are found in willful misrepresentation i would say that um willful misrepresentation is even a subset of fraud okay um, again, fraud has some extra juice and some extra, you know, bells and whistles that make it fraud. So that's the kind of the difference. Okay, so additionally, misrepresentation of a material fact may lead to other adverse immigration consequences. For example, if the beneficiary commits marriage fraud, oh my goodness, this is a very serious ground. It may have adverse immigration consequences for both the petitioner and the beneficiary. And, um, for the beneficiary, for example, if you are caught with a 204C bar, that's a fraud bar, you will be ineligible for you will be, you will, you will be ineligible um to. You, you can never seek any type of U.S. immigration law benefits again. You can't get a green card, okay? Because that bar is a very is a very heavy bar, okay? So now we're going to be looking at what constitutes willful misrepresentation particularly. Um, I see a, a comment I'll be reading soon, guys. Don't worry. I will read very soon. Let me just get into what willful misrepresentation is first of all let me open up i think i want you guys to see it really well to make you guys know that i'm giving you straight from the you know this is actually from the policy manual it breaks it down really nicely so it's a good place to um look for some of these explanations so inadmissibility that is based on willful misrepresentation requires a finding that a person willfully misrepresented a material fact of course the law defines what material fact is we'll talk about that and i'll ex I'll, ex I'll explain it in you know very simple terms as well so don't worry for a person to be inadmissible the officer must find all of the following elements okay so there are five elements of willf willful misrepresentation the first one is that the person procured or sought to procure a benefit under U.S. immigration law. So it means that, for example, you said what you said um, just so that you could get a green card or just so that you could get U.S. citizenship or just so you could get a visa. The second thing is that the person made a false representation. So that representation that you made to procure your green card or your visa must have been false. Okay, so for example, um, you're looking for a visa to come to the United States. And so the aim is, okay, yeah, I need a B1 or a B2 visa to come. Um, uh, to my aim. The second thing is that you make a false representation, you know, and to get a B2 visa, there are four fundamental things that you need to prove. I won't go into all of that, but among them are just demonstrating very strong ties to your home country. Because remember that the B2 visa, the purpose of it is that you are coming on a temporary visit. And so you, you have to have a non-immigrant intent. And so if you are able to demonstrate that, oh, I have a very good job. I've been working at this company for the last 15 years. I'm a very stable person. And I, I just have a, you know, a four week leave and I'm coming to the U.S. on a trip and I'm going back. And so, you know, you present documents to show that I've been working at this said company for 15 years. Meanwhile, you are unemployed. That representation that you are an employee of that company for which you've been working for the last 15 years is a false representation because it's not true. And you were seeking to procure a benefit of getting a visa under U.S. immigration law. Okay. And then the false representation must be willfully made. So willful willfully making a false representation means that you are aware of the falsity of the represent of the misrepresentation and you deliberately do it just so you can procure a benefit okay and then the false representation was material that false representation must be material so what does materiality mean within the context of willful misrepresentation willful misrepresentation materiality means that okay um 
that you know that 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 misrepresent misrepresentation that you made was important to the procurement of the benefits and then two um the misrepresentation shut off a line of inquiry that should have come up so let me break this down again so for example if you go to the u.s embassy and you're going for a b2 visa and you misrepresent that oh you have four girlfriends meanwhile you don't have any girlfriends okay that false representation is not material it's not germane to a b2 visa who cares if you have four girlfriends but if you make the false representation that you have a wife who's based in in your home country that re false representation is material to the procurement of the U the benefit you are seeking because having a wife in your home country means that most likely when you go you'll come back it shows strong ties not only a wife you know you have properties it shows strong so it has to be material okay if it's immaterial and you're just lying, you know, some people, they lie pointlessly, like the lie will not benefit you in any way. You know, the fact that um, you go for a B2 visa and you tell them you you falsely represent that, oh, I, I've never beaten my wife and you've beaten your wife. That false representation has no bearing on a B2 visa, you know, so it's not material, it's immaterial. So please note this element, okay, it has to be it has to have been material to the thing that you are seeking. And normally when we're challenging some of these findings, you can just challenge based on just one ground. So if even one ground is off, your lawyer or your attorney can properly challenge, um, you know, you as immigration and say that, no, this does not qualify to be a willful misrepresentation if they don't meet one of the grounds, just one. Okay, and the last thing is that the false representation should have been made to a U.S. government official, generally um, an immigration or consular officer. So if you make that false representation to the gate man at the embassy or to your neighbor, it doesn't qualify as willful misrepresentation under the Immigration and Nationality Act statute, okay? So normally, if all of the above um if all the above elements are present then the person is inadmissible for willful misrepresentation okay all right guys so yeah that's um for willful misrepresentation again please note that there are waivers uh, that may be available depending on the type of um i think we've done i don't want let, yeah let's keep it short and sweet so i will not go into fraud today we'll probably do that another day maybe tomorrow hopefully um let me just read one comment and then we'll continue very shortly and then we can call it a morning. Okay, so yeah, Cranton says, good morning. Good morning, yeah, how are you doing? I hope you are doing great. Okay, so again, as we've discussed all the five grounds and all the elements have to be present for a person to be inadmissible to the United States for willful misrepresentation. So if the person succeeded in obtaining the benefits at the, at the INA, he, he or she will be inadmissible for having procured the benefit by willful misrepresentation. If the attempt was not successful, you will still be inadmissible for having sought to procure. Okay, so that is the technical term for attempt, attempt, attempting to willfully misrepresent. So it's either you are actually willfully misrepresenting or you attempted to willfully misrepresent so so you see this the 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 element state that you procured or you sought to procure so the fact that i wasn't successful doesn't mean that you should not be inadmissible you will still be very properly very well inadmissible just for an attempt remember that attempt in law is a crime attempting any type of crime if you attempt and it doesn't work it's still criminal okay so it doesn't matter that you know, you attempted and it didn't happen or whatever, it's still criminal. So the, the person would still be inadmissible for having sought to procure the immigration benefit by willful misrepresentation. In each case, evidence of intent to deceive is not required. Yeah, you don't need, um, they don't, they, they don't need to prove that you, you, you needed, you, you know, you had intent to deceive. No, that's not relevant to the inquiry and uh, this let me see if there's um anything else uh the next thing is fraud no we won't talk about fraud today we'll probably talk about it tomorrow yeah this is a case law matter of kai hing okay maybe i could do um 
I could probably do one case where we discuss it in details, but uh, maybe on another stream or something. So today, just coming your way to discuss this with you guys. So be very careful. A lot of people go to the U.S. Embassy, especially in you know Ghana, Nigeria, in Cameroon, in Congo, Kenya, and they go and misrepresent things, and they think that, oh, well, I just said this, and it will, it will not come back to bite me. But sometimes it comes back to bite you. So even though there's no right to counsel at the U.S. embassies and consulates, when you're going to present anything to them, just to be careful, um, it's really good that you have a, somebody who, you know, specializes in U.S. immigration, who's an attorney, review everything for you. And then you know that, okay, everything that you've stated will not cause you trouble in the future. Okay, guys, so I will see you again, hopefully, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. We'll see how the schedule goes. I wish you guys are preparing for Christmas, you know, just um, enjoying the music in the air everywhere we go, like the Christmas carols and um, just the, the Christmas vibe. It's just, you know, everybody shopping, buying stuff and everything. Um, so it looks like we have a question here. Let me read that. Ernest Buedukwashi, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate that you're here with us today. Um, he says, lawyer, I do love your grandiose physique. <laughs> you are locus classicus of the law. Oh my goodness, those are some big words, big uh, flattering words. How many people can a US citizen bring to the US? There's no limit on the number of people you can bring to the U.S., absolutely none at all. So you can bring your mother, you can bring your father, you can bring your spouse, that's your wife or your husband, you can bring your children. As a U.S. citizen, you can bring your both your unmarried children and your married children, okay? Um, so for green card holders cannot bring their married children but if you're a u.s citizen you can bring your siblings even your brothers and sisters so you can bring your whole family okay so yeah um there's no limits there's no limit um but of course when you talk about bringing parents you can only you are only entitled to two parents right nobody has six parents right so you can't bring more than two parents something like that but children if you have 30 children then you are entitled to bring them so there's no limit. If you even have 500 children, you're entitled to bring them. If you have 30 or 60 siblings, you're entitled to bring them as well. Okay, let me read this. Um, Yawa yeah, Champon says, any update on the amnesty lawyer? So there's no update. I've been following it closely. They still haven't voted in Senate. We're still waiting. So guys, I will bring you the scoop. Don't worry. I, I, I got your back. I will bring you the scoop as soon as it becomes available. I'm watching them closely. Those senators... <laughs> Yeah, so let's see what they come up with soon. All right, guys, so I, I just really enjoyed all of you, your company. Thank you so much for watching, for engaging with me. I very I appreciate that. I hope you guys take care of yourselves and stay safe out here in the land of <laughs> um, the, the great and free, however way they say it. Yawa Champon says, thanks, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys as well, I really do. Okay, guys, so I will see you guys in the very next video. Just make sure you can call my line, 8027-800-564 if you need our assistance. And we will be happy to assist you. Take care and bye-bye.